for staying with us. We are still discussing reviving the book culture. So Nasa, you're going to ask um, a question. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to go, um, for, you know, Lemmy's point about the children in the rural areas mm -hmm. and then also the, you know, having not having a conducive environment. And I think that we're also just assuming that reading is for leisure alone. So these children probably go to school and they have to study. Like if they must read for exams, I'm sure they find a way. So I don't necessarily think that, you know, I get that the environment may not be conducive, but you know what? People will find a way. And to what Uti said, at the end of the day, if you, yeah, yeah. I'm screaming, I want to talk. Okay, like, please <laughs> talk. The, the problem, part of the reading culture is people read for examination. They don't understand it's a lifelong skill. Do you understand? So you should also read leisurely. I'm even no, no, for I'm the leisure saying, part no, so of I mean, it. I'm, what I'm trying to address is you're yeah. saying that the environment is not conducive. Then yes. how do they read? But I'm like, you know what? If you have to read for something, you will find a way, right? And that no, environment... If you're reading for school, you can, can I just say Please something? Do. Um, reading for leisure is different because you don't have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> reading for school is a must. Yes. So there mm. is that. But um, I would also say, let's talk about the language that books are even um, written in. Right because um, a lot of children mm -hmm. in Nigeria will not um, connect with books that are written just, you know, in English. Mm. They might, so I'm thinking, where are the books that we can have um, written in Yoruba, written in Pidgin? You know, books that children can read in their own languages and Which think for themselves. Which children are we talking about now? You know the problem I see? Mm -hmm. Most children, I think, at this, this um, generation, they don't understand English very well and they don't understand their languages. Because let's, are in between. let's remember, though, when it comes to reading, first of all, the stages are you are read to. Mm -hmm. You are read mm -hmm. to. Yeah. So it's not about these children just reading and you're like, oh, yeah. hey, this yeah. is the language they're reading mm -hmm. in. Children, they will, they will understand the language that their parents speak to them. Yeah. So let's get their parents reading to them in the language that they understand. Yeah. So when we're, you read about, hey, language, when we're talking about children reading, it really do does actually. stem a lot from the parents. the parents. There's a lot that society at large can do. But first of all, you need it's to have that connection family. with your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle, whoever it is, your grandparents. Assuming that the reading, mom and dad able to read in that local language I, which is where the what problem is. I, I well, you're even my... talking about the local language and and you just touched on what i was going to ask mm -hmm. is what part does illiteracy play in the death of this reading culture because Thank you, Uti. i agree with you that there is the parents because i totally believe you your children do what you what they see you doing mm -hmm. and not what you tell them to do so the truth is is this also underpinned by the fact that we have so many children out of school we have so many people who can't read and write um, just just to, to give a bit more context. Literacy <laughs> plays a huge part in yes. reading culture, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course it does. But uh, let's not forget that um, what they're reading are stories. Mm -hmm. So what I find is that um, people will learn what it is that they want to know more about. Mm -hmm. So if they're interested in stories, fine. There, there are people that are... Um, trying to think of innovative and different approaches to getting children reading because let's face it um, adult literacy is a whole different thing oh, yes. but towards getting children reading fine let's get them engaged let's let's have story hour you know there are people who are sitting down and reading um, stories to children and saying okay this is a story I know that um, a lot of people um, that I've spoken to over my course as of um, over my background as a book reviewer, as an author as well, basically during um, within the literary circle, people talking about how, oh, they were introduced to books by their parents, telling them a story and saying, well, you know what? This story came from a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, this is the book. You can go and read that book. Yes, so. And then their interest being sparked mm -hmm. by realizing, oh, wait, so you mean there's more of these stories? I can go and read? And I can find these stories in within these pages. So there is that as well. I mean, so when you say that, I'm just trying to then, you know, cast my mind back to when I was growing up. And I think reading, yes, so my parents encouraged it, my dad, you know, and all of that. But I think it was in school, you know, there was a library and there was a time when you had to go to the library to pick up. You had to always take a book back home, home yes. and they will ask you questions. So in fact, yes. it was almost... Comprehension. It wasn't a comprehension. It, there was that. There was also get a book from the library yeah. and they have to talk about what you read. And yeah. I see that they also try to do it at the kids' school as mm -hmm. well. Like, so you, you take a book home and you, you talk to your child about mm -hmm. what they've read. 
But I have a set. In fact, you've been to their school before. My seven-year-old daughter, like she's so clever, even if I say so myself, right? And she, I, I try to get her to read. Come like, oh, you know, you need to pick up this culture. Mm -hmm. But she's very restless. Mm -hmm. So she, I'll ask her to read a book, and she just goes to like she's came, she's came through this book, and I'm like, so what did you read? And she can tell me. I'm like, okay, but I don't, I, do, I don't see this girl sitting down to read the book. Mm -hmm. But I see that she learns more from watching cartoons, and mm -hmm. she knows so much. I'm like, so maybe, maybe I shouldn't force her to read. You know, maybe it's not reading, and maybe like the world has evolved a lot, and there are other ways. And so me, I, I, I look at the big picture. What's the, you know, ultimate goal we're trying to achieve here? If it's to learn and to acquire knowledge and, you know, build your vocabulary. But would you say that reading is still very critical? Now, here's the thing. Don't force children to read. <laughs> <laughs> because that will just that's just trauma that they'll have to work through <laughs> later in life. Well, I was but forced, and I'm fine. Well, yes, you're fine <laughs> now. How long did it take you to become fine? Very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what I would say is, um, reading does it does still have its part to play mm -hmm. when it comes to knowledge and um, gaining right. experience and understanding. Right. And you have to remember that when we are um, watching we are consuming it's more passive mm -hmm. when you are reading you are actively engaged yeah, that's true. right so that is a more active form mm -hmm. of um imbibing knowledge and mm -hmm. imbibing these mm -hmm. um stories mm -hmm. than just passively sitting down and watching that's true actually. you know they call it the boob tube for a reason so <laughs> yeah and i absolutely agree with you there yeah. because i was just going to say that we are losing, we're fast losing the ability to develop the imagination of children. Yeah. Because when you watch TV, it's a visual experience. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to imagine every, anything. It's right there. Yeah, in your parents, so actually. when you when you then, because what, what I That's see true. is, who are going to be the next generation of writers? Everybody's going to be on YouTube creating 10 minute skits, TikTok, mm. and all of that. So that fine art in itself mm. will eventually die mm. because these the youngsters today are consuming de in media in, in different ways. So I basically don't develop my imagination. How do I then come up with something as wonderful as the world of Harry Potter? Or, and again, and here's the thing. So, I mean, Shakwai's book is amazing. My son loves it. And it tells we a very real story about how you need to understand that you are comfortable in who you are, you should appreciate who you are. And these are valuable lessons that children need to learn. And even for adults, when we read you know, books, whether it's biographies, whatever, there is so much to learn. So when, when we look at that, don't, do you think that there's a possibility that the art form of writing itself could be lost if we continue in this way? There's always a possibility. <laughs> However, um, what I would say, though, is that, let's face it, humanity is about evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay? So even if writing is lost, and I think it is going to be a very long time mm -hmm. <laughs> until that happens, <laughs> because as, as many children as you see sitting down and just consuming um, entertainment, mm -hmm. there are children who are out there reading. Yeah and to who are consuming books and just eating them, sure, voraciously yeah. reading mm -hmm. these books mm -hmm. and writing as well. There are a lot of published children's authors who are That's children true, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Very true. So we've got that. I remember one of my favorite um, books, Aragon, was written by, I think he was 15 when he uh, started writing it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Christopher Paolini. And I remember thinking, thinking to myself, I was older than him when I bought his books, and I thought to myself, oh my goodness. Okay. So we do have children who are reading and children who are writing. So Absolutely. I don't think it's going to be lost, at least not in the next generation or even the next generation after okay. that. <laughs> However, I do think that um, the people who are in love with the smell of paper, like the, the numbers are dwindling mm -hmm. uh, because we are in a, we our lifestyle is now all about convenience mm -hmm. and let's face it lugging around when you have a device that can carry a hundred or more books okay, so you, <laughs> you can't yeah, carry can't you can't carry around. five yeah. books on yeah, your shoulder right. yeah. so um you know uh, speaking about convenience but people are Authors are um, finding, and publishers are finding ways to reach children mm -hmm. and reach readers on these devices. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, picture books that are now interactive, mm -hmm. that children can tap and touch at the screen and they move. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I wrote um, 
a book as part of uh, this uh, Book Dash project, which aims to um, give 100 books to children under five. Oh, wow. okay. A free, open license. And so I remember just mm, Googling my book, because as you do, <laughs> Googling <laughs> the book, and it just came across a website that had uh, animated the um, illustrations. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was there. I wrote the book. But I was there watching wow. it and thinking, oh my goodness, this is amazing. So it looks and entirely new to you. Exactly. So the, we are adapting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just going to, it's all okay. about evolution. It's, it's, it's going to constantly evolve. Mm. Okay, my take is that um, the present crop of young adults that we have in Nigeria are mentally lazy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you need to go on Instagram <laughs> and just slide. Of about seven, and they, they, can't like, they can't read. Oh yeah, that's actually now, true. What I'm People reading. Say, oh, that's too so long. I can't do you read think there's a nexus between the present situation we have in Nigeria and the fact that we are mentally lazy in Nigeria? Because a reading nation is an informed nation. Most of us don't read anymore. We don't even know what is going on. People just surf the social media for information. That is why sometimes people ask me for my opinion on an issue, and I say I have not read it. I'm not going to give you an opinion on something I've not read. You just see people peddling a lot of, you know, rumors and all that because they can't read. And too lazy. To yes, that's why are part we of lazy the though? This is not specific to Nigeria. Nigeria. Can I just add that? No, what I mean, what I mean is the present situation we have in Nigeria, the social, cultural, I'm um, sorry, political issues we have in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Do you think it's part of it? Because we are just complacent. Nobody's doing anything. Do you think it's part of the reason? The reasons are part that we do not. Do you think so? I see a nexus. Yes. Okay, you think um, so. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very clear cut when it comes to these things, definitely. Yeah. Like I said before, um, children cannot be, they, people cannot be what they cannot imagine. That's true. And so I find that people who come up with um, innovative ideas, people who who try different approaches, people who can see that, oh, hey, there might be another system other than uh, politically corrupt Thank for you. us to run, is because they have seen it in one form or another okay. somewhere else. Yeah. If all you're doing, if your stories are coming from the news mm -hmm. alone, good grief, you're going to think that the world is on fire. Very true. But there are people who are writing about hope. There are people who have um, written... Uh, by the way, it's not just fiction, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, Non-fiction biographies, yes. people who are, are writing about people. Fine, go and read a book about Nelson Mandela if you feel that, oh, I want to burn down the system. Mm -hmm. See what he did. Thank you. See what to he did okay. in order to achieve a hard-won piece. Mm -hmm. There are, if you are not interested in fiction, fine, go and read about another person's life. See how they approach their problems. Because nothing is new in this world, I'm sorry. I uh, guess yes. technology has made it fancier, yeah. but it's not new. It's happened, something so And you know somebody what? has so dealt with this problem that you, have, you are encountering. Sorry to cut you. I read a book about um, Trump mm -hmm. before he became president. Mm -hmm. So when he now was um, campaigning to the president and all that, it wasn't new to me, all the, you know, all what he was exhibiting, because I already read his book and I, I could read through his mind. He raised his children like an African parent. So I knew that Trump is not totally... American. It's not totally Caucasian. So but are you saying the 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 um, behavior he's exhibiting is African? It's some, not some like uh, <laughs> some people yeah, have dubbed him yeah. the America's first African president. So that's not oh, I object. I object strongly. I read his book. I knew where it was coming from. So oh. it doesn't amaze me. You need to read his book. No. He he's so <laughs> he's so vengeful. He does not forgive. He teaches you not to that, forgive. I, is that how you, you portray the African? <laughs> no, no, no. I said African. Oh, Pat, Pat, You touched on something that is 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 actually critical, and I always like to get to the root cause um, of these things. So. Why are we mentally lazy? Why are we no longer reading? I think, like I said, that there is a huge shift in. Children these days are almost programmed to have attention deficit disorders because they're constantly bombarded. Yeah. So, so they can't, so your daughter not being able to sit still because there's so much stimulus, there's so much. So it's almost like we had time. 
all we had to entertain ourselves were our imagination and those books. So sure. you, we would sit by and the lights, the, the candlelight, yep. we would sit by the lanterns and we would want to read. So when we start to talk about truly reviving this culture, we have Changing to... Changing the world. You know, so, <laughs> I, I, and, and the thing is this, like I say, oh yeah, my son, he watches telly, he, he learns a lot from telly, but then the experts tell us as well, limit the time your children screen spend, time. screen time and all of that. So I think that we also need to find a balance. If we truly want this reading culture to, to, to continue, well, to be revived, then we have to somehow ensure that we are giving opportunity, our children the opportunity to keep that culture going. What I do for my three-year-old is, ever since she was about six months, I started reading to her, whether she understood it or not. And today, she would not sleep without reading a story. Mm -hmm. So what, from, from this discussion, I think I'm going to take it a step further. During mm -hmm. the day, we have to have story Shopper said, don't force the children. No, she already develops. She has that okay. love. No. She's got she the love already. Story. And once you start yeah. reading to them, you build the right foundation. So yeah. they also are now curious about it. I read to her for an hour every day. So, okay. so very quickly, um, just go around the table. I mean, for me, Shopper, I just want to know when you're writing your next book because... I need to get. I like to put writers on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I've written my next book. And when are we going to? Uh, when is it's going to be published? That's up to my publisher. <laughs> um, so, well, we know that 2020 was the year of new normal. COVID-19, mm -hmm. and that delayed a lot of things. Oh, yeah. So uh, the book was supposed to be published this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a picture book. It's nah. for older readers. Oh, okay. Ah. It's. Very scary and very fun. Oh. Scary. A little scary. Some people say it's scary. I don't see it at all. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for that. So, <laughs> Nasa, very quickly, one minute. Okay, so, I mean, I think what I'll say is everyone should just be open to learning. You know, keep learning no matter how you want to learn. The whole idea is acquire knowledge and just do what you have to do. Another point I can remember now piracy. It's also <laughs> cute. Yeah. Because well, I'm not encouraged to write anymore. Piracy like, expands books. the hey. availability of books, doesn't it? So maybe from no, the reading I mean culture perspective. But for the, right, for the but writers... But you have to remember, in order for there to be a reading culture, there need to be writers willing to yeah, write what, what I mean. you can read. But why are you writing? It shouldn't be like a natural be a passion that no, you're No, when you're not earning not from it. Sorry, sorry. Your book is missing <laughs> in the traffic. is I'm very against the starving artist image. Because that seems to be what you're trying to say. <laughs> that, uh, you're do it for the world. That's what you're yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't do, do it for, for the humanity. world. <laughs> yes, I always believe that yeah. you should go after your passion, no, but make sure you can monetize, monetize your passion. Absolutely, I agree. Because I agree. let me tell you something. <laughs> Hunger um, is not the nice thing. The <laughs> first time I started having questions mm -hmm. about <laughs> being a writer was when I got my check for right. the mm. books that were sold. Uh -huh. In Nigeria, being a best-selling author does not mean that you've sold tons and tons of books uh -huh. because um, back to the reading culture. Uh, mm. Yeah, they're not, the numbers they're not are not, not, not that large. Not not there. To, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Get you that. But, um, yeah, so when I started, I started rethinking my life. Oh, Shaka, what are <laughs> really? you doing? Is it charity or is it, is it, your, passion, is yeah. it your passion? What's going on? But um, there definitely needs to be an element of passion because it is tough. Okay. We must be. It is tough. I agree. Well, I mean, it's been absolutely wonderful to have you on the show. Um, Book Lovers Day. I did not read a book today, but... Um, I appreciate the value that books bring to the table. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Catch us live every weekend from Friday to Sunday at 8 p.m. as we bring you thought-provoking, engaging, and informative conversations to your screens. You can also watch a repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. You can watch a repeat of this broadcast tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been an insightful conversation. Please keep the conversation going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. So in case you missed today's quote, here it is. You don't have to burn books. Was this our quote? Oh no, this is a different quote. So reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. So thank you for joining us and have a good evening.